All right, with those strong words, we move forward to Genesee County, Michigan for the Urban Land Reform Initiative. And joining us are Dan Kildee and Don Chen. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Don Chen. I'm with Smart Growth America. We pursue a vision of sustainable communities. Uh, and uh, one of our top priorities is revitalization of communities. Um, uh, after a number of years working in the field, we found that uh, uh, there were a tremendous number of cities uh, that face widespread property abandon, vacant, uh, abandonment, vacant properties, uh, and the hopelessness that comes with that. Uh, these are places that where, where many property owners might be waiting for the market to turn around, and so the cities wait and they wait and they wait. They can't afford to wait any longer. And we found that these are, these are problems that have their own kind of gravita gravitational pull in terms of the spiraling uh, downward and, uh, downwards in, uh, in hopelessness. Um, after working in this field for some time, we, we started to find out uh, that a lot of the people who take on these issues tend to toil in isolation, isolation with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, without uh, any help from a national network or experts in the field. And so we decided to team up with Virginia Tech and the Local Initiative Support Corporation to form the National Vacant Properties Campaign. Uh, the campaign uh, has been on the lookout for innovative uh, efforts all around the country. That's how we discovered the Genesee Institute and in Genesee County. Uh, we uh, were looking really for uh, uh, community leaders that have taken the bull by the horns and identified all these different stakeholders that have uh, a stake in these challenges. People like firefighters and police, people who care about property taxes and, uh, and public safety, uh, neighbors, uh, and a whole variety of other folks uh, who really uh, care about these issues but individually cannot take these on uh, because the problems are so complex. Uh, the challenges are governed by different jurisdictions, uh, and as, as a result, uh, there, there has been uh, very little progress to date. Well, Genesee County uh, has really pioneered uh, this area because they've taken a number of tools, many of which have been available to communities for some time, things like tax foreclosure, land bank authorities, brownfields uh, redevelopment funding, uh, and have used that as a powerful tool by linking them all together in a process that really turns the process of tax foreclosure on its head. Instead of uh, identifying uh, strategies where you have tax lien sales uh, and then suddenly just making a quick buck to try to get those properties back, uh, using those for community development purposes in a very deliberate way. Uh, we've managed to uh, use uh, Genesee County as a shining example around the country. Uh, we've gone to a whole, uh, about a dozen different cities uh, to provide advice and peer-to-peer and -peer services. Places like Buffalo, Cleveland, Toledo, Duluth, New Haven, New Orleans, these are all places that the county staff have visited to, to provide their insights and, and their services. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have encouraged communities to enact policy reforms. Places like uh, New Orleans, uh, Atlanta, Little Rock, Arkansas, the New, New York Assembly, uh, Indianapolis, New Jersey, a variety of places have really tried uh, to develop these, uh, these uh, initiatives. Uh, I remember um, uh, two years ago we went to uh, Flint to have our first national conference on land bank authorities because of the recognition of their leading position. Uh, and a number of, uh, of grandmothers from Little Rock came from the coalition uh, against dangerous buildings. Uh, and those are the kinds of people who are coming out of the woodwork to come and embrace uh, the campaign and the, the leadership lessons that we've uh, gotten from Genesee County. With that, I'll turn it over to Dan. Thank you. Uh, our program, uh, the innovation of our program is, as Don said, to link these systems that generally have not worked well together, tax foreclosure and collection with the assembly of land and with neighborhood uh, preservation. Often there are these conflicting public goals. As tax collectors, which is my job, we have to collect money in order for government to operate. Unfortunately, the systems in place in virtually every state pit the interests of neighborhoods against the need to collect taxes. Our system has brought these two completely distinct processes into a single self-financed process. The results are really astounding. Uh, hundreds of properties that would have gone to the hands of speculators and millions of dollars that would have gone into the pockets of investors, tax lien investors, now go to work transforming neighborhoods. And let me just give you an example of the results that we've seen. Recently, Michigan State University finished a two-year study of our work and showed that three and a half million dollars that we spent, really that we diverted from smart or lucky tax lien speculators we spent that money to demolish abandoned houses and clean up and green properties in the city of Flint. 
MSU did a two-year study and measured the value impact on surrounding property and showed that that $3.5 million produced $112 million in value that otherwise would have been lost. That's a significant change in those systems, and it's one that I think should be replicated in other communities. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go to questions. Ed Dorn. This may seem a, a rude question, and I apologize in advance. Uh, Mr. Chen, I, I don't recall seeing your name in the application materials, and I'm a little confused about your role in representing the county uh, or well, the, pro I'm, the project. I'm representing uh, the campaign, and the uh, county is actually an advisor to the campaign. Uh, they've been such a cutting-edge example of how to reclaim vacant properties around the country that they've been one of our advisors from the very beginning uh, of, of the effort about five years ago. It's still, I, I still don't get it. The, the city started it, but you all run a national organization, right? And are you endorsing this, or, or is this something you're trying to think what they're doing nationwide? I don't, I don't get it either. Uh, we, we are endorsing it through our peer-to-peer -peer, um, technical assistance where we've basically taken the county staff uh, all around the country to, um, to showcase the uh, impressive gains that they've uh, uh, made in the county and to encourage other uh, communities to, um, to take on the reforms. Carl? Uh, there's a question to, uh, to you, Mr. Chen. I, the the Im really impressive thing that I think uh, Mr. Kildee and um, Genesee County has done here is um, uh, cross-subsidize the city and, and the county and also uh, the guarantee of revenues to each through the use of revenue anticipation notes. Uh, how replicable, in your view, Mr. Chen, is the uh, is is the is this wellspring of generosity essentially from the county to the city uh, or the core uh, that faces the biggest problem elsewhere in the country? And are there other examples that? Uh, you know of which have now used this cross subsidy that Genesee County and Mr. Kildee have created? Uh, <clears throat> well, in terms of uh, you know, counties working with cities, uh, there have been a number of regional approaches um, and some statewide reforms. And so, for example, uh, in New Jersey, uh, a Tax Foreclosure Reform Act was passed uh, that, uh, that does it on a much larger scale. Um, but we're finding that uh, across the country, um, every community is different. Very often it's leadership from the city itself uh, to create a land bank authority. Uh, very often it also requires the co cooperation between ju different jurisdictions. Um, but I would say that it's a relatively rare thing to have a county uh, working together with the city on this particular issue. David. Uh, Dan, in the, in the application, uh, you mentioned uh, that you grant post postponement of foreclosure to hundreds of homeowners. And with some of them, you do something called active case management. Could right. you tell us what that is? Well, there's a lot of resources that are available to people in the community that they're completely unaware of. I have a full-time uh, foreclosure prevention staff person that works with those folks that are disconnected from those resources. Very often, we find people who are facing tax foreclosure have two things in common. Uh, one, lack of health care, but secondly and most interesting, low literacy skills. And so to hand somebody a pamphlet and say, go down to the Salvation Army, they'll help you with your taxes, we found not to be useful. So for those hard cases, I have a person who literally walks those cases through the process and gets them the help they need. That particular part of our work, I think, is really significant. These are people that would have lost their houses to some out-of-state lien purchaser who would have enriched themselves on the, um, on the misery of that family, and we've been able to prevent that. So uh, it, it, to me, it, it, it's a very significant part of this entire system. It's not just land banking. It's not just tax foreclosure. It's a system that connects all those processes to one another. Time running out. Bill Klinger. Uh, Mr. Kildee, I, yes. I believe you're the nephew or, or, or cousin? Of, I am the uh, nephew and colleague. campaign manager of uh, Congressman Kildee. One friend. of them is a permanent position. Good <laughs> <laughs> Well, as a Republican, you know. I, <laughs> right. He likes you. <laughs> uh, my question is, you were a finalist last year, as a matter right. of fact, in, in this program. Have there been any additional components uh, added or, or 
experience since then that you could tell us about? Well, I think more, more defined results. This, this uh, study that MSU showed that had this increase in property tax value we thought was remarkable. What was really interesting is just within a few weeks of that study being released, the City of Flint tax assessment data came out and showed a 5% increase in Flint residential property, which if you're from Flint, that's a remarkable, remarkable uh, movement. Out of 28 communities, Flint had the fourth highest increase in property values in our region, which is really quite extraordinary. Mr. Killian and Mr. Chairman, I'm afraid your time is up. Thank you both. Thank you very much.